The minority in parliament is questioning the recent producer price increase of cocoa. Governments increased the price per ton of cocoa from 3,392 cities to 5,520 uh, cities, representing a 62.74 percent increase but uh, addressing the press briefing monday minority spokesperson on greek and coco dr uswe free says the increase is only a propagandist move by government he asked that though there has been some improvement in the bonuses paid government is being insincere with the actual situation on ground as coco farmers in the country are still not receiving bonuses due them the, the farmers were denied their rightful bonuses. The president comes out last May to say that they are going to be paid. A new price is announced, and in the new price, and a new bonus of five Ghana cities per bag, there's no mention of payment of the outstandings which belong to the farmers. Where is that money? Ladies and gentlemen, that's the question we are asking the government. When is he going to pay the cocoa farmers the outstanding bonuses of the last three years to which they are due. Contrary to the propaganda, the new producer price of 345 is only slightly above the prevailing price in our neighboring countries, where the market price is now equivalent to 337 Ghana cities per bag of 64, a difference of only 2.4%. That's eight Ghana cities difference. Any appreciation of a city in the course of the, of the coming year will quickly wipe out this slight price advantage. And yet government is hooting on top of the buildings, on top of churches everywhere, that, oh, we are paying the highest price in West Africa. It's not even West Africa. We are talking about Cote d'Ivoire. These figures, the 337 I'm talking about, is the price that Cote d'Ivoire farmers are now getting. And there's a difference of only 2.4% between the new price and Cote d'Ivoire. The recent policy introduced by government to supply fertilizers and other farm chemicals free of charge to cocoa farmers is only a propaganda ploy to deceive the good people of this country. The reality on the ground is that not much of the chemical inputs is reaching the farmers. And for the little that reaches them, the farmers are made to uh, uh, to, to make some payments for the inputs. And we had this over and over again when we went to the uh, In essence, these farm chemicals are not free. Besides, the plain truth is that there's a lot of discrimination based on political color of the farmers before they could have the fertilizers. The extensive report of smuggling of fertilizers across our borders and the emergence of a huge black market in fertilizer and other chemicals in this country belie the seriousness of this free package. So let's talk about the some more. William Ejapon Koitu is Member of Parliament for Akim Oda and Deputy Ranking Member for the Select Committee on Agri and Cocoa Affairs. William, you're welcome Thank to the you. program. Thank you. Let's, let's hear it again. Why is it important that the farmers are aware that the government is being insincere to them? Uh, let me first say a good afternoon to all listeners, mm. particularly the good people of Pakimoda. Mm. The government is being insincere because uh, 2008 manifesto mm. and 2012 manifesto, the government consistently mentioned, page 35 and 53, that will pay the farmer at least emphasis mine, at least 70% of FOB. FOB is the price that the government gets when it sells the cocoa farmers beans outside. Mm -hmm. The government has not gone to till the land. It is a farmer who has worked. Just like you and I, when we work at the end of the month, we pay taxes to the government. The 30%, the government is promising 70% to the farmer, which means that to me, more or less, we are taxing the farmer 30%. Mm. But then, looking at the prices that have been uh, the prices given to the farmer over the past three, four years. Before this increase from mm. 212 Ghana cities to 345, or let's call it 350 Ghana cities, the farmer, by our calculation, was given 31%. That is 
woefully inadequate. Mm. And that is uh, not consistent with the promise that they made to the farmer. Mm. Now, why could the government now all of a sudden increase the price of cocoa from 212 to 345? And they are saying that they are going to give a bonus of five cities per bag. And so if, we, if even I add the five cities per bag to the price quoted, we get about 350 Ghana cities per bag to the mm. farmer. That is about almost 62.7% increase. Mm. They have done well, but that is not enough. Because you see, the prices of items, if you take cement for instance, mm. from 2008, 2009 till now, 2009, bag of cement was going for about nine cities. Now it is about 33, almost over 300% or so. The cocoa farmers increase in price has not even gone up to about 150%. Mm. But the cocoa farmer also goes to the same market to buy the cement in order to get one or two bedrooms. And so we are saying that if the government promises in their manifesto, mm. 2008, 2012, that I'll give you 70% of the price, we expect that the government will do just that and nothing else. Uh, May this year, President Mahama was in Tepa mm. addressing cocoa farmers and he made a promise to them. This year, thank God, uh, the international price mm. has increased and therefore we are going to give you 70%. And this 70% does not include, mm. that's what he said, does not include mm. uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, scholarships, cocoa rules, whatever. So 70% of the FOB. Could, couldn't, couldn't we pardon the government for coming a bit lower on the 70% considering it has to squeeze from all sectors of the economy to make the the country better no you can't do that because you see mm. the industry is gradually dwindling okay. and that is dangerous for the country mm. okay mm -hmm. because in the olden days you could see a lot of people who even work in town and then go to do farming i have worked for ghana kokobo for seven years when i went there i did a business plan on uh, production of cocoa to see if graduates who read agriculture could take cocoa farming as a venture i realized that it wasn't too good. Now, with this dwindling producer price, now it makes the situation even worse. I have abandoned, I'm not so serious with my cocoa farms again because I realize that if you hire labor to do it, at the end of it, what you get mm. is, is meaningless. You don't even break even. Mm. Because I'm an absentee farmer, you have to hire labor for everything. And being schooled, I put down every cost. So at the end of it, if you go and sell your cocoa at the price that we're getting, it was so bad that I wasn't any longer interested. In the same sense, you realize that now Galamse is even taking over cocoa farms. Why? Because the cocoa farmer is realizing that at the end of the year, if I sell my produce, mm. I am not able to make ends meet. I'm not able to pay my fees. I'm not able to even save something to put down uh, to buy a block or a bag of cement. Mm. So why would I continue doing cocoa farm? When the Galamse uh, man is right on my neck, look, I'll give you so amount on each plant of cocoa that if you decide to give me this land. And so cocoa farmers are selling their lands to what, miners. What, what other options are available for the farmers if they decide uh, that they want more from the government? They have no bargaining power. Mm. Because by law, if you go to do cocoa farm, maybe about 1,000 acres, 5,000 acres, and you decide that you have money to even set up your own factory, the law will not allow you to take your own cocoa mm. to feed your factory. Because the law says that whatever cocoa anybody produces after harvesting, it belongs to the government. So the farmers have no alternative. Mm. They are price takers. Mm. And so... Is, is that something that should change? Uh, well, then... I mean, uh, I tell the land, it belongs to me, but yes. why won't I have... Uh, you see, the, f the farmer doesn't have that capacity to go and negotiate at the international market. Mm. Even though they could allow them to also sell it in the country, in country, uh, it is very difficult for that, the farmer to do that negotiation. Mm. And if you also allow it to go this way, Cocoa agronomy, what about the research work that should feed the cocoa plant? All that. It doesn't have the capacity to do that. Definitely, someone with the knowledge will have to help the cocoa farmer. Mm. And so the government is saying that, look, I'll give you 70% and keep the 30% for all the studies on mm. the see, that, that, and all that. Then it brings me to the question. Mm -hmm. Are you sure these farmers themselves are not happy with the fact that government has gone up a little, though it is not up to the yes, promise? Yes, yes, yes. They wouldn't know because... Uh, once they get any increase, they mm. become happy. Mm. Okay? They become happy. But if they become happy and you tell them the truth, that on the international market, this is what is happening, then they become agitated. Mm. Okay? I remember in 2008, when uh, MPP was in power, mm. we, increased, we, we did well to increase production by bringing in this mass spraying, 
uh, high tech that is giving them fertilizer and all that. Mm. And production started increasing. Then, then we started increasing the price, but it was gradual. NDC made a lot of noise about it. No, that is a cheat. Why do you keep about almost 40 percent? And then I think the price that MP was giving them was about 60 percent. Mm. Who do you tax 40 percent at the end of a month? So at least why don't you? When we come, we we'll give them 70 percent. Blah blah blah. Before the government changed, I mean MPP time 2008. By the close of 2008, MPP was giving 71 percent mm. because we listened to what the opposition was saying then. And if you are very very realistic, you could manage the total cocoa business without 30 percent that you retain. And the government will still make profit. So it went up to 71%. Uh, now they come in straight away the first year. They increase it to about almost 76 but, but they have decided to retrace their steps and then make it better. Yes. And, and these farmers are happy. They, they went look, on we to become the president. Look, look, we want them to keep to their promise so that the industry will not die. Mm. At, at $3,000, if you do the calculation, I don't want to go into the calculation, maybe because you have not even asked that question. Mm. By our calculation, the government is not telling the farmers the truth. Because mm. when they came out with this price, Sir Tepe was saying that the 350 Ghana cities per bag is 75% of FOB on the 2nd of October. Mm. On the 10th of October, some group of polit political farmers, let me put them that way, because okay. all those people who went to the, the, the president are politicians. They are not real farmers. I see. Yes, they are. And so when they went to the farmer, uh, when, when they went to the president, the president said, well, we did so well to give you that 70%. That is to keep to our promise. So the president and the uh, finance minister, who is telling us the truth. It's 75% of FOB or 70% of FOB. That brings us to a, a question as to what is the FOB price? They're hiding it from us. And we know that the average price on the market, London market, if you Google, you get it at around 3,200 now. Mm. It is not only that you're going to get that maximum price, but you should remember that Ghana, Ghana's cocoa in terms of quality mm. commands the highest premium. Mm. And so even if we don't get a 3,200, at least we are able to get 3,000. Mm. So our calculation is based, based on the fact that FOB price per ton, let's assume it is 3,000 Ghana cities, uh, $3,000. And so when we work down, mm. the price per bag should come to at least, the 70% should come to 420 Ghana cities. In other words, price per bag on the international market will be 600 Ghana cities. And then if you take 70% out of that, you get a 420 Ghana cities. So beyond so the- So why 350? I'm sure we would have the finance minister answer that in subsequent mm. broadcasts. Mm. But beyond the press conference, wanting to help farmers, what are we going to see you do, do if this is not also just politics for you? No, we are in opposition and we are supposed to provide constructive criticisms mm. for every sector of the economy to do well. Mm. We, don't, we have not held press conference only on cocoa. But, but, I mean, finance. but like you said, yes. this farmer has got very little bargaining mm. power. So beyond yeah. the fact that you tell the yeah. media that mm. this is what we believe the government could be mm. doing to our cocoa farmers, yeah. then what happens? If we stop talking about it, then what well, happens? Before the farm? price was announced, mm. we went out on two occasions. Mm. One of the occasions, we went as far as to Sevi also, where we have everybody there being a cocoa farmer, to let them know that this is what is happening at the international market. And therefore, we don't expect anything less than, say, 400 and at that time the dollar was up okay. so we didn't expect anything less than 450 Ghana cities for the farmer as a producer price then because government got this uh, 1.7 billion dollars from the syndicated loan for cocoa mm -hmm. and the 1 billion uh, dollars or the euros that Europa. you raise, mm. the dollar drops so if the dollar drops of course the price will have to come down and that is why by our calculation we think that the producer price will have been fixed at around 420 Ghana cities besides that Cook divorce price was always above Ghana, and therefore, Ghanaians who are closer to the borders, Togo and Cote d'Ivoire, were always smuggling cocoa to the outside world. And when it happens that way, the country loses a lot of uh, money. Revenue. Okay, so peg it closer to Cote d'Ivoire or above Cote d'Ivoire because our price should always be above that of Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. Their quality is not as high as ours. If we fix our price as uh, above that of Cote d'Ivoire, they will always come to Ghana to even buy in order to beef up their quality standard so that they could get something closer to our price at the international market. So it should never be comparable, it should always be above them. Mm. Now, the 350 Ghana cities now uh, shows us our price is slightly above that of Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. DS is 337. If you convert your price into uh, cities, you get 337. And now it's about 345 or 350. That difference there will soon be wiped out if the dollar does not stabilize. Mm. And I'm telling you, by March, April, when the dry season comes, 
we will see what will happen to the dollar. It will rise. We, we'll see what happens also from yes. here. Thank you yes. very much, William. You're welcome. William Ejapong Koitu is Member of Parliament for Akim Oda. He's also Deputy Ranking Member, Sadat Committee on Agric and Cocoa Affairs.